Welcome back to Plant Happens. Uh, my name is Jin. Um, today we will be talking about the rest of my Hoyas. In Hoya tour part one, I showed all the plants, all the Hoyas that was in these two glass cabinets that's behind, that are behind me. Um, and as I mentioned in my last video, today I am gonna attempt to go through the rest of my Hoyas. So I think the number of Hoyas I, will be comparable to my last one, but I am truly not sure. It could be more, it could be less. So hopefully it will be um, not too long, just like last time. Uh, hopefully it's gonna be around one hour to go through all of the plants. I keep saying plants, all of the Hoyas and uh, I hope uh, you enjoy. So, you know, um, every time I talk a lot in the introduction, so hopefully this time it's not too long and we'll jump right in. Okay, so, um, I literally just said I'm not gonna, I'm tr gonna try not to talk too much today, but um, I just remembered, you know, I didn't really um, say anything about how the video is gonna work um, in case that some of you didn't watch the part one. Uh, if, if that's the case, I recommend you go watch part one first. But anyways, um, so uh, I will be going through the rest of the Hoyas I didn't show on part one, like I said, but um, some of the Hoyas I may not have the ID because um, I haven't, I didn't have time to go through all the Hoyas and make a list or anything. So some of the Hoyas I may not get the ID right or I may not remember the ID right away. In that case, I will always put the name down here or somewhere. So um, when you see um, Hoya and I may say the wrong ID, but always trust what is down here because that's um, uh, when I'm editing, I will go and make sure to check the ID is correct. And if I'm saying the ID wrong, just trust what's um, written down here instead. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the basic uh, basic um, what's that called um, uh, disclaimer, I guess. Uh, and yeah, so let's get right into the Hoyas I got off this shelf on my left. This one has no. Um, humidity other humidity it's not enclosed so it's just the room humidity and i do have the um grow lights on all of my hoyas and uh i think you might see some of these hoyas are not looking their best and i do notice hoyas growing in room humidity are more susceptible to like pest damage or you know drought damage and things like that and i don't have problem showing plants that's not looking their best because that's just part of the hobby and maybe it will make you feel better because you know you are used to seeing perfect plants online but um I think um, most of myself included, like my friends agree that, you know, it's important to show things that's not doing well. So yeah, you will see some Hoyas here that's not looking great. And I may tell you why I think it's not doing great, but that's going to make the video extremely long. So maybe I will just, you know, uh, quickly move on, uh, move on to the next plan. But that's just a uh, FYI and Oh, and I also forgot to mention, um, in part one, I counted all the Hoyas I have. So I think I have 74 Hoyas in my part, part one. So I will continue to count. And I also mentioned in part one that I will only show one of each Hoya because I cut and propagate. I mean, I chop and propagate all the time. So if I'm showing all like five or 10 propagation, that's like too many. So I will be only showing the main plant and then if I there's something I want to specifically show on the cutting I might show that too but I won't go go and like show same plant multiple times I keep saying we're gonna get right in but this time we're gonna get right in so the first one I have here is Hoya Fichii uh, this is another one that is not doing too well because um, this definitely had um, what's that called um, the flat mites and uh, it, I've been trying to treat it for a really long time but as I mentioned when it's kept in like a not um, enclosed place um, even if you might kill the pest 
once it's just very easily come back but i see that it's growing a new vine now so hopefully that's gonna continue now fichai is actually a really cute hoya in my opinion they uh like all the leaves i have now are kind of misshapen so it's not a good represent representation of what they're supposed to look like and i have some cobwebs on here <laughs> but this one may be the best one to show that it's small leaf hoya but has very pretty um venation like a lot of venation going through the leaf blade and uh here i have two vines that's starting to grow now so i think it's on the recovery hoya fichai oh i already don't know what the name of this is i find that hoyas that i don't care too much about i tend to forget the names um even though i might think they are cute when i buy them and you know you fall in and out of love of uh, plants all the time but i i really can't remember the name of this this one it's actually an interesting one but um i really can't remember the name at the moment so i will look it up and put it down here but this one has like silver splash through the leaves and when the new leaf grow out in highlight it actually grow really really dark this one i think maybe a little bit darker still and then they kind of fade to the green color what is, what are you i feel like it ends with flora or folia or something but i could be completely wrong but yeah this one i'll put the name down there and the third one i have here is a common one but i think it's one of the you know prettiest when it comes to color because um it's very easy to grow and but the new leaves grow in like really really pretty jewel tone pink and so this is the hoya carnosa crimson crimson princess so this is my crimson princess and it's a uh, i would say medium to large size hoya uh like i guess mentioned it's really easy to grow and this is what the new leaf look like okay let's get this vine out of the place so you can see and you you see that these are pastel pink it grows out even darker than this this is already starting to fade and then it gets to like pastel pink and then eventually just these cream color so it's a little bit confusing to you know new hoya uh, collectors that what's cre crimson queen and what's a crimson princess and basically queen has the variegation on the outside leaf margin and then princess it has variegation in the middle and then i think that's that's the reason why i think princess is a lot prettier because the there's more um more pink in the new leaf when the queen gets pink leaf it's just on the edge but with, with princess it's just the whole almost whole leaf so i think this is just really pretty okay next one this is another one that i can't quite remember the name i might have shown this already in part one so if i did i um i will just cut this part off but i think it's a gps something this one is very very pretty i, I love the leaf on this but it's been quite hard to grow for me it's just really easy to drop leaves and then it doesn't grow leaves very often but i do think it's very pretty and i think i bought this from russia and next one up is my hoya nova ghost in my last video i said i somehow forgot the name of the new guinea ghost and said it was gray ghost i don't know why but um i think gray ghost and nova ghost are very very similar but um, the variegated version of nova ghost is the argentia princess or argentia picta i think so personally i think nova ghost is prettier nova ghosts tend to have like wider leaves like these these leaves and then i find the gray ghost leaves tend to be skinnier like this now these are gray ghosts but it's still growing um these um like 
skinnier elongated leaf but that's not how it's supposed to look this is more of how it's supposed to look and i think they are super pretty if you're into like silvery hoyas obviously the new guinea ghost is a great choice because it grows really fast but nova ghost is another great one i find it to be relatively easy to grow as well i should do something about this <laughs> Almost all my Hoyas, I don't have trellis because making trellis take too long and buying trellis is actually pretty expensive. So I find uh, sometimes when the vine is too long and I don't care too much about that Hoya, I just chop it off. I know a lot of people hate that, but yeah, that's just what I do. Next one, not doing very well. This one I struggle with a lot. So this is Hoya Ricardo and this is my third time trying to grow this. First two times I bought rooted ones and they both died and then third one I traded and it, I think it was also rooted in pond or something. So that gives, I thought that gives me best chance. And for a while it was doing fine. It grew probably four leaves in my care and then they all start to do this. I'm not sure if it's fungal or I don't know if it had edema or something, but it always does this and they just start dropping leaf even though the roots look completely fine. I'm not sure if you can see the roots because of the reflection. It looks a little dry, but um, it's um, water watering day today, but I don't know. Does anybody else have this experience with Ricardo? Ricardo has really cute like big round leaves. So I really want to grow them, but I just I just never got to like grow it big. So Hoya Ricardo. Next one, uh, I used to have much bigger one of this, but this is I think the last one I have left. And this uh, this is Hoya ma08 and it's also been known as well it's i think it's been confirmed that it's a verticillata species but it, it doesn't have specific name and i think most people refer to it as hoya verticillata um species anjuk ladan i i might be wrong i don't know how to say it but um sometimes it's being sold verticillata black margin or many different names but yeah it's actually one of the cutest hoya with the black margin in my opinion it has some splashing with higher light it turns kind of lime green with black margin with lower light it looks like this and sometimes you have like the abbey looking leaves and with the black margin i'm sorry some of my hoyas have uh, a lot of dust but when you grow them outside of the cabinet that's just what happens hiding my face so you can see the leaves yeah so very cute very easy to grow hoya next is hoya cro croniana cro croniana splash silver green they're all mixed i think most of the silvery part has uh, reverted already i think over here, you can still see a little bit of the silverness. I don't know. Maybe you can't. Okay, let's turn it. Like here. But I think it's reverted to mostly green. The, this one, a lot of people in the beginning were confusing it with Lacnosa. And to be honest, I'm still not sure if they're different. But in my experience, they do look different. The stem of this is much thicker than lacnosa like not as viney but the flowers i think they smell the same and look the same so i really don't know the differences in hoya flowers are actually really hard to tell this is blooming at the moment maybe it's too wide to see can you see there hopefully it's focusing but yeah, this is another very easy to grow Hoya and uh, leaf shapes are really cute, like heart shaped, thick heart shaped leaves. So very beginner friendly Hoya as well. And this pot is made by local plant friend Lucy. 
I might tag her Instagram in the description. Next one, very plain looking Hoya. This is Hoya Sweet Scent. Unfortunately, this hasn't flowered for me. So all you can see is these plain looking leaves, but they're like thick and like very satisfying to touch and very like quintessential leaf look. I don't know how to explain it, but very waxy, very cute. And assuming it has very sweet scent because it's cold Hoya sweet scent. So I really look forward for it to bloom. But so far it hasn't bloomed for me and I think the blooms look very cute as well. Maybe I can try to find a photo and put it here. Yeah, Hoya Sweet Scent. And last one, what was this? Yeah, so I was right. So this is Hoya Rigidifolia. Um, the name suggests, like at least if I hear the name, I assume it has rigid leaves but I don't find it to be any more rigid than other Hoyas I guess but it is kind of interesting looking very different from other Hoyas in my opinion I did struggle with this a little bit as well as you can see these old ones are kind of yellowing and um, I tried to save it by making cuttings and I think I sold those ones but uh, luckily the mother plant is okay now and it's grown these new leaves and I really like it. It's very different from other ones like I can see um, I think you can see the venation is like debossed so it's like I guess maybe that's why it's called rigid foil. It's like ridges around the leaves. It's like it's like a groove. It's like indented and the pattern is very different from anything else I've had. Hoya rigidifolia. Okay, so that's all the Hoyas that's on this shelf. And now I'm gonna try to gather Hoyas out from my small tent. Now the small tent has a shelf inside and the Hoyas are growing very intertwined. And I tried to detangle most of them last week. So hopefully they're still okay, but I'll be right back. Okay, so um, I got about half of the Hoyas out of the tent, so we can go through them. It's not going to fit on the table. Uh, let's just uh, start. Um, this first one is Hoya platicalis. This is not a typical Hoya with thick leaf. This is one of the thin leaf Hoya, but it also have these long strappy leaves. That's very, very pretty. I think it looks kind of like... Um, Anthurium, maybe um, Palidiflorum, or maybe some other pendant Anthurium. But yeah, it, it has some flower buds growing. And um, this is one of those Hoya when I first got it, it looked really ugly. The leaves were this short and then it was all like deformed. But as it grow out, it is super, super pretty. Hoya platicalis. Next one is, um, this one is actually Hoya no ID. This one I got in a trade um, as a seed pod. No, I think it was just sprouted seed when I got it. But uh, I know the mother plant is the Hoya Rebecca, but the father plant is uh, unknown. And I think it does look a lot like Rebecca, but it also has, I feel like it look a little bit like What's that one? Um, Hoya um, Species of Bertonie, the very contented Hoya. So, but even though father plant is unknown, it's a very pretty plant and uh, it has ability to sun stress. Uh, my plant is not very close to the light source, so it's not very, it's not very um, sun stressed but I will show you when it was very little. It, uh, small Hoyas are easier to sun stress than large Hoyas. So like I'll show you when it was very little, it was very sun stressed and it was the cutest thing. So maybe I should um, take cuttings and grow them small. So because they were super cute, but yeah, this is Hoya no ID. Next one is Hoya NS05-055, if I'm 
remember it correctly. This one is another one that sounds dresses really cute but right now I just um, detangled this from the shelf and then list it so it's not super close to the sun but you can still see the part that was close to the sun is very very red and this one um, can also look very like pastel pink that very pretty color so I'll show a photo here when it was um, more sun stressed as well so this is Hoya NS05-055 next one I think this is Hoya Dalat this is another one that has um, really dark black margin with a high amount of light it might be very hard to see but I do think like this leaf has black margin mm. yeah very hard to see like this one is not in the highest light as well Hoya Dalat next one uh, is Hoya Cross Petiolata Splash this one used to be very expensive too but I think it's quite accessible now uh, it's one of the favorites as well. I feel like I say that about every single Hoya, but it is very pretty, isn't it? The splash is not so much of silver splash, but the way it contrasts the venation and the dark green leaf blade is just very pretty. So this is the Crassi Petiolata splash. And I will now show you the regular Crassi Petiolata. So this is the one with no splash I don't know how what what <laughs> this is doing but that's the best I can do so as you can see dark venation green leaf blade with no splash this is the regular form grows really easy as well I don't know if maybe I can compare them this one is the clear winner for me and next up is I had um, Hoya Mini Bell in my last part one and this is just the green version of it. I'm not going to talk too much about it. It's long leaf Hoya, uh, very rigid leaves and uh, it's just a green form so not much more to add to Hoya Mini Bell. And this is Hoya Meli Meliflua? Meliflua? Hard to remember. I think it's Hoya Meliflua. This one has very p funny like mm, puddle-like leaves and there's like nothing. There's no venation. Um, I mean like if you look closely there is some but like it, it just looks very like spatula or something. And I just recently cut this so it look kind of sad with this burnt leaf but you get the idea. Uh, I think it's kind of like charming Hoya Meliflua um, This one is Hoya Conerii I believe it's Conerii It's um, kind of interesting looking Hoya It's dark leaf It looks very matte Like there's no shine to it kind of And then there's some splashing but I do find this to be hard to grow. Um, the leaves always look somewhat misshapen and uh, they're very easy to light bleach and um, this one I feel like I need to water more. Okay so next one is this Hoya Ila Ilagiorum. Ila Ila hard to say. Um, there's a lot of Hoyas that kind of look like this like the Hoya Valmoriana or Hoya Blusher Rizia. I, I can't really remember how to say those names, but I think they're all in the same family and their flowers look very similar. I got this mainly because I saw someone post the flower of it and it was really cute, but it's small, so so far it hasn't bloomed for me. Okay, so the next one here is Hoya GPS 7731. What's that? Heck is that? Fungus nut? Weird. Um, again, this is Hoya GPS 7731. Mm? And I think they look like green grapes. So sometimes I just call them Hoya green grapes. Um, very cute um, Hoya. The leaves grow kind of like con convex. 
concave. I don't know which is which. But, and the uh, leaves are actually quite shiny right now. It's not looking too shiny here, but if you are very on top of cleaning the leaves, they can look really shiny and they're very cute as well. Hoya species GPS 7731. And next one here, I think this is Hoya species Saba. And then there's a number that comes after because there's a very different Hoya Saba out there. And this one can, I think I've shown this, sorry, I don't know why my voice went like that. I think I've shown maybe like a smaller one of this in part one. If not, you are seeing it now. And as you can see, this is another one that can sun stress very, very red or more, almost purple. And this is the biggest leaf that it's grown so far. And uh, I actually really do like this Hoya. Oh, it's very dry. I need to water it. So, Hoya species Saba something something. And while I'm here, this is uh, one of the taller Hoyas. So I'll show it. This is one of a uh, Hoya species Ache that has no name. And I don't really know much people posting about this. I actually imported a whole bunch of... Um, Hoya from Ache that had no name and then they were just sent to me as Hoya species so I have no idea what this is but the back of the plant is very interesting as well if you can see kind of like the other Ache like it has almost like a venation in the back as well but a lot more clean looking leaves and then like embossed looking venation i actually sold all of this type at one point but i kind of missed it so i contacted the local collector who bought one and then she was nice enough to i think trade back or something with another hoya uh, cutting and hers is huge too so hoya species ache type something i don't know if you know what this is feel free to comment and then maybe I can update the ID. Okay, and next one is, actually this one is super cute. I really like this one as well. It's a Hoya Carnosa Chelsea. Mm, cultiv it's a cultivar of uh, Carnosa and uh, they have very, very round, uh, somewhat heart-shaped, somewhat circle-shaped uh, leaves and they are even rounder than Hoya Carnosa. There's something eight, something eight. I can't remember. I had that one too, but I like this one much better because I think it's even rounder than that one. I mean, look at this leaf. It's so cute, and it's a Carnosa, so it grows really well as well. If maybe I can find more leaves. Look at the heart shape. Isn't it so cute? And uh, like I mentioned, it has those dimples. Was it dimple aid? I really can. There's also like crinkle aid and crinkle something. There's too many Carnosa cultivars, so it's really hard to remember. But Chelsea honestly is one of the best, I think. Look how cute that is. Is it going to catch my face through the hole? But I really should dust my Hoyas, but it's just too much work. All right. What do I have here? Okay. I also have Hoya Tequila Sunrise. Tequila Sunrise is very special to me because it just have all the characteristics I like from Hoya. It's, it's a little like not perfect shaped. So it has that like dumpster look and but it just doesn't have the splashing but I don't mind in this case because it sun stress is so red and the venation is so like prehistoric looking and I keep talking but I hope you can see it but it's just so hard to show. I also recently just detangled this and then um, made a whole bunch of cuttings so it's just really hard to show but also like the, these bigger Hoyas are hard to show as is. So I'll um, get the cuttings. 
So this is one of the cutting. As you can see, this part was covered by another leaf. And then the bottom of it is super red. And this leaf is also very, very red. And maybe you can see the venation better in this one. I don't want the perlite to fall. Very, very pretty Hoya. I think it's very special looking. And as you can see, it grows pretty well as well. It hasn't been too difficult to grow this one. And it sun stresses easily. That's the most important part. Next one is Hoya Callistophila something something. The number part I can never remember. So I'll just put it down here. But it's a type of Callistophila. And it has kind of different venation than regular Callistophila. Can, I think you can see that. Um, hard, to, hard to explain, but if you are into Anthurium, you can kind of get the same vibe as the Cala Blackie venation. It just kind of bleeds into the edge and it's not very sharp looking. Like the, it's not very crisp venation, but it has like a, a lot of um, irregularities. Uh, I just recently made cutting, so this is back to two leaf cutting. But uh, yeah, I think that that is my favorite Callistophila, and I think that's the only Callistophila I have left in my collection. Okay, so actually there's less than what I thought that was uh, left in the tent. So hopefully we can just get through this very quickly. I have two Hoyas planted together here. One is Hoya Srigaoensis and the other one is Hoya Quinquenervia. It's either Quinquenervia or it couldn't be Pinyin, right? Because Q-U-I-N is not Chinese Pinyin. Chun Chun Nervia. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Queen Queen Nervia. Um, so the Surigao Ensis is this really big, glossy, beautiful leaf. And then the Queen Queen Nervia is the, this one. And I think they're quite similar in the appearance other than the size of the leaf, I guess. And uh, this one definitely has more pronounced venation. And this one is more understated. But yeah, these I got as part of um, kind of like a combo. So they're not like um, something I'm, what, well, what should I say? Like I'm not paying too much attention to them. They're kind of growing in the tent, but I'm not giving it special care. Next is uh, this one. Uh, this is the Hoya acicularis. Uh, this one, I think the roots are way too big for this pond and the pond is being pushed up. But uh, Hoya acicularis. I think this is one of the more interesting Hoya because um, it probably is hard to see, but it's very, very thin, like, um, like pine needle-like leaves. So this is what the leaves look like. I think it's very hard to focus because it's so thin. But that's essentially what the leaves look like. Uh, it's not focusing. But yeah, so I think I get quite a bit of interest in this Hoya whenever I make a cutting to sell because it's so different. I know that um, there's another one, Hoya spartioides. That's also very interesting. I had them, but I killed them, so um, I don't have it anymore. But this one's much, much easier to grow. And it still have that just thick look. And yeah, it's very different from any other Hoya I have. Hoya acicularis. Sorry, um, you might be hearing some footsteps in the background because um, Fred is out and then, you know, him walking on the hardwood floor. There's a lot of click click like click clack going on in the background. Um, next one I have here is Hoya Carnosa Suzy Q. This is also another another um, Carnosa cultivar. The very interesting thing about this Hoya is all the leaves that are kind of like have the folded like a taco shell and Suzy Q is the outer variegated. I don't think this particular one comes in like 
inner variegated. I've at least I've never seen. The only one I've seen is the outer variegated one, which is Suzy Q. And they are really, really pretty, I think. I have the regular um, Canosa Queen and I like them both, but this one I think is a little bit more interesting. It's not all like twisted up like the Carnosa Compacta and this is much easier to grow for me and also in case you do get um, pest on this, you can still clean it but Compacta, I feel like it's impossible to clean. So I do really like the Suzy Q. Next up is Hoya Ooh. Clemenciorum. So I showed you the other type of Clemenciorum in my part one and that one's from Indonesia and I'm not sure where this is from. I think it's either from Vietnam or Thailand. I can never really like find the post but there's also another name that is um, like a number code IML 157 or something. If I can find the exact thing, I will definitely put down here. But personally, this is my preferred um, form of Clemenciorum. I don't know why I always have problem with autofocus. Okay, there you go. So this is the Clemenciorum. Thailand or Vietnam or something. So this one have darker foliage compared to the other Clemenciorum and the uh, venation is a little bit less um, it's not so the contrast is not as what <laughs> what am i trying to say so the other one have dark venation but this one has like the embossed venation and i think this one look so jurassic and like it looks like plants that was growing when like dinosaurs were around i guess and I think it just looks really interesting and pretty and this is my favorite leaf. I mean, I don't know much more what else I can say other than this is beautiful and I just love it so much. All right, and uh, another one I have here. I'm not quite sure what this is. I thought this was the... Uh, this is also one of the plant I got as no ID. And I still, I'm not sure what it is. It's kind of interesting looking, but it's not my favorite, but it's also kind of nice. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say, but yeah. So I don't have the ID off the top of my head, but I think it's one of the one from Indonesia. And lastly, from this box, I have the Sigillatus. Very, very long Sigillatus. So it starts here. It keeps going. Keeps going. Keeps going. And there. I am so <laughs> laid on trellis in this, but it's kind of trellis itself to the shelf. So that's why I've been kind of putting it off. But yeah, I think Sigillatus is definitely one of the prettiest um, foliage when it comes to Hoya, because um, it's so dark with silver splash. And it's growing quite easily. I haven't been doing too much of anything to grow it and with some exposure as you can see like this one this leaf is purplish but the round form is definitely my favorite Hoya Sigillatus all right so that's everything from my small tent and actually, unfortunately, I kind of run out of time. So I will be finishing up the rest of Hoya that's in EXO and uh, just around the house on the windowsill tomorrow afternoon, hopefully. And, uh, and then I'll have some time to edit and put it up this week. So next time you see me, 
not next time like next thing i will probably be in different outfit but yeah um be right back hi welcome back um obviously it's a different day today is actually february 27th um i plan to do this second part way way earlier i actually already edited the first part that you already seen but what happened is that i filmed the second part sorry the second part of the second video and i thought i saved them but it was gone when i went to edit and i think what happened is that when i deleted some old footage i somehow selected them and deleted them at the same time now um, i thought maybe i just forgot to press the record button but no i actually did some test videos that day so i think that's not possible so anyways i was quite discouraged by that so i kept putting it off kept putting it off and it's almost march so i know this is really late but you know i'm i think this second part is not that long so i'll just try to get through it as quick as possible and so i can upload it before i travel i'm actually traveling next month so i won't be able to uh, do any uploads but hopefully maybe i can do some videos while i'm gone so yeah so let's get right into the rest of the hoyas before i keep talking okay so this one is i bought this as hoya limo limone Limona limonaria or something like that and I looked it up when I was doing some research I made cuttings so I wanted to make sure that I got the name right and when I looked it up I, I noticed that limonaria or something like that was recategorized as Nicole but when I looked them up they don't really look like this plant so when I see the lim other people's limona limonaria or the now called Nicosonier, they do look like the leaf shape of the New Guinea ghost because that one is silver version of Nicosonier. And this one looks quite different. It's much thicker leaves and um, the venation is not as prominent. I wouldn't say it's prominent on Nicosonier, but it's still more prominent than this. It's pretty flat with just a midrib. So uh, I'll just show it to you. And it's quite shiny. I'm not sure if the Nicole Sonier is this shiny. So that is another reason why I'm not sure if this is the right plant. So for now, I just call it no ID. Uh, if you have some ideas, please let me know what you think this is. And uh, maybe we can figure it out. Oh, I forgot to mention most of these plants are on my windowsill. That is... Um, east facing window uh, my kitchen is on the east side of my house and that's pretty much the only part that gets somewhat sunlight so I have some of these bigger Hoyas where I don't like I don't know where to put them so I put them on the windowsill and so far they've been growing okay I guess so yeah next one is my Hoya obovata uh, Hoya obovata is one of my very favorite Hoya. If I have to get rid of all my Hoyas, this is one probably I would want to keep, even though um, it changes every day, my favorite Hoya. But I think a lot of people like Obovata because of the leaf shape, because I mean, look at how cute they are. They are like round puddles, basically, and they are very, very thick. If you like Hoyas for their thick foliage, this is definitely one that you will love. And they also come in like splash version or like variegated version. But in my experience, as well as some of my friends' experience, the variegation on this plant could be a little finicky. Sometimes it just goes away. Mm -hmm. I had one that was silver and variegated and it just reverted really quickly and it never came back. Yeah, so this is my Hoya Obovata. This one, I've shown this in, on my channel before. This is my Hoya Joy Splash. And 
I've um, chopped it quite a bit after I shown it last time, so it probably looks about the same size as before, but um, it has grown quite a bit, and then I chopped it back. So this, these are the top two new leaves. This one, as you can see, is almost full green, but this other leaf is very nice. Hoya Joy Splash. This is a must-have in my opinion as well. It's, it's not the easiest, but it's also not the hardest. So if you have several Hoyas and you are pretty confident growing them, I don't think you'll have problem with this one. Yeah. And, uh, the splash is not, I wouldn't say it's very consistent because it does throw these like almost full green leaves sometimes, but it does come back as well. Next one is my Hoya Rebecca. So that's what it looks like. Uh, as you can see, it's, on, it's a hanging basket and it's hanging above my window. And um, this is one Hoya that also sun stresses really red. But um, I noticed the bigger Hoyas sun stresses. By bigger, I mean like more mature and it's very full. It's harder to stress them because I assume because it's so big and have so many leaves, it's easier to keep them healthy. There's so much more leaves to provide nutrients, so it doesn't stress easily. It's very dusty, I'm sorry about that. But this Hoya, um, I cherished it very long time, even though it might look very like normal, like not nothing special. But this is one Hoya that non-stop blooms from um, spring to summer it's already starting and it it pretty much 100 percent of the time has flower from spring to maybe to even until fall so this is hoya rebecca very easy going okay so next one i have here is my green Hoya Weyeti. I've shown the variegated one. I have both the inner variegated one and the outer variegated one and green one. So I guess I must really like this Hoya. Uh, the green one is very easy care and as you can see it looks really nice with um, when it's in a hanging basket because it has that like long leaf and it just really drapes really nicely. So yeah, this is my Hoya Wei Yeri. Uh, some people tell me this one is fast growing, but for me it hasn't been that fast. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> it hasn't been that fast growing. It's easy, but it's not growing super fast. Maybe it's just the condition I'm giving it, but definitely like easy to take care. But if you want it to grow really fast, I don't think you can grow like a small cutting into a hanging basket that quickly because I bought this pretty much like this but maybe like 30 to 40 percent smaller so but I think they are be becoming more common here and in the spring and summer sometimes you will be able to find like something like this in nurseries and the plant stores so yeah if you want something like this hanging uh, on your window or you know just as a decoration this is a really great one okay so only two more plants from this section because um these are the plants that's on the window so so it's not like i, I don't have that big of a window so uh this one is my hoya carnosa crimson queen it's very long and i also bought this pretty long already because I was looking for one that's full but this is kind of just full in the middle area and it was kind of bare at the top so I just recently propped it and put like this section over here so hopefully it will fill out a little bit better but I really love Crimson Queen because I do think it's very elegant looking Hoya and when the new leaf grow out, the white part of this Hoya 
is pink and very very pretty i don't have any new leaf on here right now this is one of the new leaf that's grown it's already lost the pink but i think i can show you over here hopefully oh my gosh the this is one of the full white leaf these will eventually die but I think this plant is pretty big so it can sustain something like that. So unless I have a full white strand, I'm just going to leave it. But the new leaf coming with this really pink color like in this petiole. These, you can see the petiole is very pink. So the white part of the leaf usually will grow very pink in initially. And then it fades to this almost completely white color. Yeah, so yeah, I think, again, this is one of the more common Hoya, I guess. So you should be able to find these pretty easily. Um, I feel like they're kind of available year round, but I haven't seen one huge that often. You, you can usually find like maybe three inch pot. So, but they do grow pretty quickly if you give it um, proper conditions. So. Yeah, Crimson Queen. Um, so this is Hoya Matilde Splash. Um, I've seen people with really, really beautiful specimen that it's like so splashy and so silver. Mine has been kind of wishy-washy with its silverness. Um, it likes to grow more green leaves for me and I had to keep chopping it back for it to produce a vine that is more silver. So you can see over here, this vine is very silver, but uh, you can also see over here, it's very green. So it tends to push out new growth from the green part, and it doesn't like to push out new leaf from these um, silvery side of the plant. But uh, it, it's still really pretty. I think the mix of the green ones and the silver ones are are pretty. I think I say this very often with my silvery Hoya. I like the contrast between the dark green leaves and the silver leaf. So I don't mind it too much as long as um, uh, these silver leaves are staying and it's growing together with the green leaf. Like this section, I really like how this looks. And I hope you do too. Okay, so now we're going to move on to plants that um, I only have one Hoya in my big tent, but most of these are from the Exoterra enclosure. These are the Hoyas that's in the highest humidity condition. And uh, even, even then it's not super high. It's probably around 75% at the maximum. And what you will notice is that because it's in high humidity, some of the aerial roots had started rooting in midair, and it's just a little creepy. So I hope you don't mind that. But yeah, so let's just um, go through the rest of the plants really, Hoyas really quickly. Uh, this one is the one that is in my tent um in my part one video i showed serpent silver and this is the green version of it i had a bigger pot of this but um, i find serpents to be semi difficult they tend to get root rot really easily once you oh the, the toaster oven just went in um they are very thirsty so once they get dry the root gets rot, um, root rot really really easily so you really need to be on top of watering serpents but i do really like them they are really cute like the leaves look like little buttons and uh, i've noticed that the new growth has started coming in on these cuttings so i assume they are rooted there's some sap that's stuck on the leaves, but yeah. So yeah, this is my green serpents. Uh, there are a couple of them that's just um, on a shelf where I grow other philodendrons and stuff. So those are the bigger ones and this is one of them. So this is, oh, so dusty. This is Hoya 
macrophylla uh, outer variegated. Um, so I don't know if I talked about this on my first video, but macrophylla, macrophylla or macrophylla, depending on how you want to say it, and latifolia, they keep getting recategorized. I do think the name they're going with is macrophylla. I could be wrong. Anyway, so this is the outer variegated macrophylla, and macrophyllas, macrophyllas are usually quite easy to grow. So I did get this as a tiny, um, like 2.5 inch pot, and it's grown pretty big now. Uh, these are the two new leaves. This one has a lot more variegation than other leaves, so that's kind of cool. And this one, this this pair is the this pair are the new ones but I do think this is a really pretty one but I don't think a lot of people talk about it it's um it's kind of like bigger crimson queen almost with more you know prominent venation going through the leaf blade and yeah it's very glossy and nice okay so the next one I have here is Hoya vitellinoides I hope that's how you say it but um this one I think is really cool. Uh, I used to have Meridithei and I really do like the look of Meridithei with how like densely the venation is running through the leaf blade. But I have, oh, sorry, I have bad luck growing them. I've killed a couple of them. So I don't think I'll try it again because I am happy with Vitellinoides with the similar kind of um, venation. And this is the newest leaf. And this one is so big. And so nice so I'm really happy with how it's doing and as you can see once it gets older the leaves kind of turn a little bit more pale and it's not as freely like the Meridithii but you I think you can see how the venation has very similar vibe yeah I'm really happy with this new leaf it's really huge it's bigger than my uh, my hand so this is my Hoya vitellinoides. Uh, another one that's just um, growing outside of enclosure is this Hoya australis lisa. And this is the type, there's many many different types of australis but I will put it down here if I can find the name type of the australis but this type with inner variegation is typically called Hoya australis lisa and the new leaf grow in very pink and uh, luckily I do have a new shoot that's growing out right now so maybe I can try to show you can you see how pink that is I, I wish it was a little bit bigger so you can see better but it's really cute and even after it hardens off, I think the patterns are very, very pretty. So I do, I know this is a pretty popular Hoya, but spring, summer, I think it's become very, very uh, affordable and easy to find. So if you see these at nursery, I do recommend it. So this is Hoya Australis Lisa. I think the rest are from my enclosure. So um, I'm sorry if you see some creepy aerial, aerial roots. Um, this one looks pretty sad right now. This is my Hoya Clemenciorum Splash. I haven't seen anybody else with this Hoya and I was very proud of it when, when it was bigger but it got root rot and uh, I only have one leaf let, left. Luckily it looks like it's rooting and a new growth is starting to come out here. So I really hope I can grow it out again. So this is my Hoya Clemenciorum Splash. This leaf doesn't look too splashy, but um, the older leaves looked like it had more splashes. So if I can find the new, uh, sorry, the old photos, I'll put it over here. I really hope this one grows more leaves soon. Yeah, I really love this Hoya. Next one, um, uh, this is a cutting of my mother plant, but my mother plant only have like three leaves and it's a really long vine, so I decided to just bring this one instead. This is my Hoya onichioides. These are not very long. Usually when I look up leaves of this Hoya online, they look a lot longer and it has some dimples throughout the leaf blade and they're fuzzy. So... 
hopefully you will you'll be able to see that and this is Hoya Onichioi this next one I have here is Hoya Carry Eye I kind of wanted this for a while this is one of the newer Hoya I have and the leaves are very dark and almost anthurium like in a way I don't know if that makes sense but these are the newest leaves and then the older leaves look like this I heard this is kind of slow growing. This growth pattern is very similar to Kamingiana. And this type of Hoya, I always have a hard time like what I'm supposed to do once it grows longer. And I kind of crushed the new new growth. So it's, it's brown at the tip, but it is putting out new vine now. I don't think I can show that, can I? I don't think you can see, but there is a new vine coming out here. So hopefully it will be fine. Hoya carry eye. The next one I have here probably is uh, the Hoya in my possession that's with the smallest leaves. This one's Hoya mini species Papua IM08. This one has been pretty difficult for me. I killed one once and then this one was kind of sent to me as a bonus when I bought different one from uh, Alice, Mrs. Koizumi plant and it's just started growing new vine here. You, I hope you can see this like kind of splitting into two over there but they are just so small and cute. It's not really focusing when it's close. Hmm. Next up is another type of Hoya spe species, Ache. Uh, as I mentioned a couple times already now, I got a whole bunch of um, different Hoyas from Ache and they were all no ID. So this is another one of those. Um, I thought this one might die, but it looks like it's putting out new leaf and the new leaf is looking so cute it has that embossed look with the venation and it has some splashes so it's really cute and I'm really excited to watch this one grow so hard to focus now and uh, this is what well, older leaf used used to be bigger leaf, but now it's not so big. Okay, so this is my last bunch. Uh, this is continuation from the Hoyas that's in the Exoterra. So I'm just gonna start from the one that's closest to me. This is my Hoya Amnicabilis. This one, I think the leaves are kind of normal looking, not very special looking, but uh, Flowers are very cute. They're like tiny little yellow bello, bello, bells. So first of all, the leaves kind of look like this. As I mentioned, it's not super special. But it flowers pretty often. And this is what it looks like when it flowers. It's just so hard to show. I don't know what to do. Uh, I think you can see it's like a bell shaped and it's just really cute and it's like light yellow color and as you can see how long this pedanko is it just flowers all the time super cute Hoya Amicabilis next one here is Hoya Waliniana variegated am I saying it right? yeah I think it's Right. This is another one that I struggled with. Um, every time I bought it, it came in moss and then I couldn't root it in any other substrate. But uh, my friend Joanna rooted for me in perlite and now I finally have one that I can keep alive. It's been quite slow growing, but it is very, very pretty as you can see. And with more sun, I think it can sun stress as well. But in my exo, it's not very much light so this is what it looks right now 
Next one is Hoya Teng Chong Genesis. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Now, I'll give you a um, trigger warning. <laughs> the moss is extremely gross in this cup. I tried to root this in many, many different um, substrate, perlite, pong, leka, soil. They all died and for some reason it can only survive in this really gross moss. I even tried just regular moss and it died as well. <laughs> so in order to show you, I kind of need to show the moss so i'm sorry if it's really gross but these are the cutest hoya in my opinion so they are even smaller than serpents it's bigger than the papuas but it's smaller than serpents and the leaves have this like ab look it's just not gonna focus is it as you can see super gross moss i'm very sorry but we're just here to look at the Hoyas, right? That's the back of the leaf. Let's see. I just really want to show the texture. Oh, there. I think when it's, it's in light, you can see. So cute. Maybe I can find a photo on Instagram or something so you have be get better idea but I really want a full basket of this but it has been very slow for me maybe it's just the way I'm growing is not right but I'm trying and uh, next one I have here is Hoya Diversifolia Splash this is one that I mentioned the roots are like growing crazy but this is another cute one with very like puddle-like leaves and then it's very thick and very hardy and it's not the fastest growing one but it's also not slow. I just recently chopped the top off so it's not that big but this is the Diversifolia splash. Okay, this one I have here is one that I've been slacking off. I should do something about this but it doesn't grow leaf very regularly as you can see it put out this much vine before it gave me one leaf over there so I'm afraid to cut it because um, it, it was kind of difficult to um, acclimate this so this is Hoya hypolasia and this is another one that's very fuzzy and kind of similar to the onychoides I guess but it's even more fuzzy, fuzzy. Why is this so hard to focus now? Maybe it's easier to see here. Well, somehow this focus is no problem. But it's longer than on the shoulders and it's skinnier as well. And then you can see some dimples and it's very fuzzy. Hypolasia. I believe I bought this as Hoya Colina something i have to look that up but there are many different kinds of colina or the um what is the other name sorry i really can't remember but this one i think it was oh I irina no not irina colina something something I'll, I'll put it down here but this one i was hoping that it's gonna have the silver pattern i'll show you my next one that is kind of a family with in the same family with this plant and it has the very unique silver pattern on it that's what i wanted but this one just turned out to be all green and it looks kind of like my ns 05055 hmm? 05055 yeah so it has been kind of difficult for me as well i had this for a really long time but it's still really slow i mean small so and this is one of the Colina variety. And as I mentioned, I'll show you my other one. This one I actually uh, got as a bonus plant, I think. And this was just labeled as Colina species. Let me see if I tag this somewhere. No, but this one is growing out to be a lot more pretty. And the leaves are not as round as the, the, the one I just showed. But the pattern on these are just really cute. I do think it's kind of similar to the pattern on like Sigillatus maybe. 
but I think it's quite different from like other silvery Hoya. And it is actually one of my favorite as well. I feel like maybe all my Hoyas are my favorite, but I just really do like Hoyas. Like, um, you know, it almost look like a mo what should I say? Like mosaic? Like this leaf. It's just so pretty. Isn't it very special looking? Yeah, so this is the Hoya Corina species is what I got it as. Okay, so this one, this one is Hoya Wilbur Graves from China. Um, I think I already showed my regular Wilbur Graves and for the longest time Wilbur Graves are only coming in from Russia and they have short chubby leaves. But then these came out and a lot of people originally thought maybe it was a um, pubicalyx, maybe it's a hybrid with pubicalyx. But when it flowered, I think people kind of confirmed that it is a carnosa. So then it is uh, Wilbur Graves. But they do still consistently grow leaves that's longer than my regular carnosa. So I always differentiated call it Wilbur Graves from China. But as you can see, very pretty silver splashing on this plant. And I feel like this grows easier than the Russian one. We're almost there. This is second to the last. This is my Hoya Coriacea Green. This is um, thin leaf Hoya. And it has very like leaf-like leaves. I don't know how else to explain. It's just like... When you think of leaf, that's isn't that like what you think a leaf would look like? And I got a whole bunch of this. Um, I imported a whole bunch of these because I wanted the silver one. But most of them turned out to be like not much splash. And once they grew, they just turned green. And I kept some because um, I, I like to keep many different kinds of Hoyas. But... I do think the silver one is what you want, what most people want. And that's my last Hoya to show. And that's my Hoya Coriacea silver. Uh, I don't know what else to say rather, other than it's just really pretty. But I do find these get like yellow spots really easy. But it's very pretty and it's definitely one of my favorite and I do kind of wish this was a thick leaf Hoya because how pretty it is but it does grow really tall like this and once it's really tall it's kind of gangly and don't know what to do with it so as you can see this is the green one and this is the silver one and they do have same leaf shape and I wanted the silver one but I got a whole bunch of these so I do have some but these are what I wanted. Okay, so that concludes my Hoya tour part two. And this is supposed to be my Hoya tour for year 2023, but it's already end of February. And I honestly wanted to finish it a lot earlier, but as um, some of you might have seen on my community page, um, I lost some footage and got really discouraged and I kept putting it off. Um, at the same time, I was quite busy with family and work. Anyways, um, so I hope you enjoyed looking at all my Hoyas and um, it was um, a lot of work to bring them all here so maybe like in the middle you felt like maybe I'm, I look tired or like I'm out of breath that's why but it was really fun to go through all the Hoyas and um, talk about them and it, talk about how all of them are my favorite <laughs> but I hope you found something you like and maybe you found something you added to your wish list um, I have plans on getting like a, a couple new Hoyas this year but I am focusing on really taking care and getting my Hoyas to a good condition this year rather than just keep buying new Hoyas, new Hoyas, you know, because um, 
first of all i don't have that much space second of all you know some of my hoyas are not looking that great so you know if, if i should spend more of my energy taking care of them anyways uh if you let me i'm gonna keep on blabbing so i should just stop here and um again thank you for watching this video if you liked this video please hit the like button that helps my channel a lot and also if you like to see more videos uh in the future please consider subscribing to my channel and if you press the bell button you will be notified when i post a new video okay so i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you soon bye now